Beautiful souls, do you have a prayer request or want us to send you healing energy today? Would you like us to be praying for you, a friend, or a loved one? If this is you, go to worldlargestprayernetwork.com to submit your prayer requests. And while you're there, please join our team of prayer warriors. Your angels say that prayer not only opens you to miracles, raises your vibration, and helps you heal, but the more you pray, the more God's presence is felt here on earth. Feel your angels' love right here, right now, as they surround you, and be on the lookout for positive, loving messages that are meant specifically for you in today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And today we have a really, really fun story um, that comes to you from Ken and Yvonne, who are both on together. If you're over on YouTube, you can see us. Um, if not, you can hear us and it'll all be great. But Yvonne has some really cool photos to share today. So you might want to see these. Yvonne and Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, thank you. you We're doing, happy, Julie? happy to be right. here. Sure. Oh, no, thank you for sharing your time with us. So Yvonne, I know that your um, uh, spirituality started, you know, really young when you were a child. I want to start there because I think there's a lot of value that listeners can take away from this conversation today. Sure, sure. So when I was a child, I think a lot of children are like this. Um, I always felt very connected to spirit. I, I would talk to angels in my room and I didn't think anything of it, to be honest. I thought it was normal. Um, I had a lot of connection with butterflies. My mom was just saying to me, they would land on me. I would They would be surrounding me all the time. And again, I just thought that was a very normal thing. Um, but I had a, a little bit of a colorful childhood and um, it required me moving a lot, changing schools a lot. And I, it was, it was, it was challenging, um, had a great mom, great grandparents, but I always knew something told me that as I got older, things would get easier. So, um, I, I listened to that and, um, up until I was about 30, it was pretty challenging. And, um, then I met this one over here <laughs> and, um, you know, got married, had two boys and life has just been really smooth ever since. So during that time, um, obviously I pushed my spiritual side away because we had busy careers, raising kids, you know, like most people do. Um, and I really wasn't able to dive in like I wanted to, um, so I think it was in 2012, my dad died of lung cancer at 54. And um, in his eulogy, I had played the song In the Arms of the Angel by Sarah McLaughlin. And um, so that was his eulogy song from me. And when I flew back home um, and I would be driving to the airport very early in the morning to catch a 5 a.m. flight um, because I worked um, in, in different cities, that song inevitably would come on. So the odd thing was, Julie, for me, was that that song would come on if I was on a country station, if I was on a pop, if I was on hip hop. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. So <laughs> I knew it was my dad. I knew he was he was there with me. And I would just acknowledge him. I'd say, Dad, thank you so much for visiting me. Of course, tears streaming down my face. I had to catch a flight. Didn't make for a really good work day with makeup, but you know, I, I went with it as I really appreciated the message. So that's how I started reconnecting with spirit as I realized that my dad was coming to me and saying hello. Um, it was just this knowing and this song, and it made me feel really warm and welcome. So that was the beginning of it. Um, from then, um, I found myself just pushing it away because of, of life. Um, but when I would have quiet time, I'd always pick up a book that would be related to, you know, God, the knowing, you know, the power of, of now, those kinds of books. And I would read those books. And I wished I had started my journey sooner because had I started it sooner, I probably would have been a better manager, a better mom, a better wife. But, you know, life gets in the way. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you I get know, that. I commend you for what you're doing because you're in the midst of what I was in and you somehow make it all work. But I do know that your story is, has a parallel where you, you could feel that calling and you, you know, you had acknowledged it, whereas I didn't at the time. But um, for a lot of busy moms out there and parents, 
I think if you can start now with your journey, then then it, you're going to be better for it. Um, try to find that few minutes to to connect to to spirit, God. You'll probably feel a lot better and be better at your job. So, so that was the start of mine. Um, and then really the first um, what what really happened with me, Julie, how I found you um, was I was listening to another podcast, and you know when you listen to podcasts, it'll say suggest this podcast. And there I saw this cute little blonde about angels. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this a listen. And I fell in love with your podcast. And um, within about two months, I joined the angel membership. And I've been with the angel membership for over a year now. Um, And I renewed my membership for the following year because it just really fed my soul. So like, I love listening to it. I typically listen to it when I'm working out um, because that's my quiet time. I'm not a gym rat, but I listen to it when I can. And I was listening to your podcast um, and uh, I just became extremely addicted to it. So the the story that I want to tell first involves my grandmother, my great grandmother, Mama. (laughs) So um, I was listening um, to your podcast and um, uh, it was you were talking that month about who's on your spiritual team. And I definitely said, well, Mama is on my spiritual team. Um, so I knew that she was on my team. And Mama, I just want to give you a little background about Mama. <laughs> She's my great grandmother. Um, I was blessed to have her for 32 years. And um, she had a real connection with 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 my husband. Um, she it was more of a, a fun banter that they would experience back and forth. She was the the great grandmother that would smoke cigarettes, poke holes in it, and have a beer next door. <laughs> she was spicy. She was spicy. She had these huge blue eyes, and um, she would just not hold back on anything that she wanted to say to you, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but I loved her. I loved her for it. I we had similar energy together. Um, she'd take me shopping at Kmart. Let me pick out an outfit. You know, wash my clothes. She was just amazing. So. Um, when I got married to Ken, um, you know, they they became, he really loved her and they would tease each other back and forth. Um, when she passed away, I was training in New York for, for my job and I wasn't able to attend the funeral. So in my place, my husband went and really appreciate that. So fast forward, she passes on um, through the years and um, of old age. And um, every time Ken would do something like uh, say something sassy to me or I don't know, he'd turn his head and look at another girl, <laughs> something funny. I'd say, you better watch out or Mamaw's going to get you. <laughs> and lo and behold, he would trip, Julie. He would trip or he would fall. Or he would fall. <laughs> is true. this true? It's very true. This is true. <laughs> I thought she liked me. <laughs> so, so the entire family, my mom, my my grandmother, and my um, my kids and everything, don't say that or Mamaw's going to get you, kid. And, uh, <laughs> so it became a really big joke in our house. And I think, you know, Ken come from, he comes from a Catholic background. Um, and I don't think he really believed in any of this. But over the years, I mean, I'll let you speak. Do you think that you felt like she was there? Well, that was something that was, it was very special that the family thought that she was always connecting with me, whether it be like Yvonne said, tripping me or, or making me aware that I'm treating her great granddaughter not right at that time. Um, but it, I always thought it was cute, but it really became every time I had an argument with Yvonne, I'd always look over my shoulder and make sure something wasn't going to happen. So I, mean, I didn't do anything dangerous that day. But it's true; it was um, it, it was it was it was kind of cool because I did I was there at her funeral. Um, and we were there with, um, my stepson, our son, I've been with him since he's four years old and we were there together and Yvonne was there. Yvonne was really upset, but I was able to at least tell her I was there. And, uh, and maybe that's why there's a special connection between, uh, between me and her for the last 25 years since we've been together. So (laughs) not just that, but she, you're right, Yvonne, she was really spicy. She had a ton (laughs) of personality and you were talking earlier, Yvonne, and she goes, it's not that I don't like him it's just that or that i don't love him i do um i just love you more and um (laughs) she's keeping you in line ken she's keeping you well she should have liked me more because because we used to go visit her grandmother and mother but before we went there we dropped by her house and bring a 12 pack of beer for her so (laughs) then we go over to the other in-laws house we're not as fun as as not as fun as (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love it. I love well, so it. That, that leads me to the angel story, actually. So what happened is I was in the gym and, and you were talking about your spiritual team and I was listening on my my iPod, uh, my, my earbuds. And 
it, I said, well, mamma's definitely on my team. So that the night before I, Ken and I had an argument and it was over something stupid. I don't even remember what it was, but we had scheduled a couple's massage the following day for our anniversary. So I'm in the gym trying to work off the steam. He's in the gym. We're not talking. And I say to mamma, I'm like, mamma, help me out with this. We've got a couple's massage that we're going to be heading to in the next half hour. And um, we're in this fight and this is not fun. There's, we're not talking. It's, it's uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm working out on the treadmill. I'm saying this to myself. And I said, can you please send me a sign? Can you, I don't know. I pulled out of my ass butterfly. <laughs> I was like, can you send me a butterfly? And I'm thinking, I'm not going to see a butterfly. I mean, we're going from the gym to the car, to the massage. I mean, how the hell am I going to see a butterfly? So we get in the car, the, the tension is thick, right? And I'm praying to Mamaw, Mamaw, please, let's lighten this up. And um, as we uh, take the 15 minute ride to the massage, uh, we get out of the car, we're not talking. And I look over in the parking lot is a car, which I've never seen this before. The license plate was a Florida license plate and it was covered in butterflies. And I thought, I've never seen a butterfly license plate before, but I just kind of chuckled to myself and I, I didn't say anything. I just kind of laughed and said, okay, thank you, mama. You know, <laughs> all right. That was, that was a good attempt. We'll see, you know? Yeah. So we go in and we sit down and, you know, we're waiting for the massage and another couple walks in and this couple <laughs> was in their twenties. Probably I look up, I'm smiling at her. She is covered head to toe in a romper with butterflies all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I looked at her and she probably thought I was crazy. And I start laughing. I'm like, oh my God. So it's quiet in there because everyone's getting ready for a massage. And I lean over to Ken and I go, and we hadn't talked, right? We hadn't talked for like hours and stuff. <laughs> and I lean over and I go, okay, I got to tell you this. And you're just going to think I'm, an, uh, I'm, I'm crazy and I'm a whack, but this is what happened. I saw this license plate and this butterfly, you know, romper. And so Ken proceeds, which he would never normally do. He proceeds to tell the story to the young girl in her 20s. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, don't tell her that. She's going to think we're crazy. <laughs> Mamma's here. Mamma's like, you know. So what happened is we all started laughing and we were smiling and the tension was gone. And it just allowed me, I'm getting chills right now. It allowed me and him to enjoy the massage. And we knew Mamma was there because where the hell are you going to see a butterfly romper? I mean, <laughs> she's a grown adult and she had a butterfly romper on from head to toe. I mean, so. Yvonne, I've been telling, like, we've been sharing these angel stories on the podcast for three years. I've never had somebody come on and share a story of angels bringing through signs that, you know, cut the tension between yeah. a couple. <laughs> like, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Another testament to the work they can do. That's awesome. Exactly. So we had a wonderful massage and, and you know, that wrapped up that. And, you know, we never talked about it again. <laughs> so, um, And then most recently, um, you you were doing your January um, co-creation um, manifestation class. So, you know, January is a crazy time, as you know, with after the holidays and things and family. So I knew I needed to work on the vision board that you, you talked about. So I was listening to your week three training in the gym. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm on the, the treadmill. And I'm thinking, geez, I need to go get some magazines. I don't have any magazines. And I'm bitching to myself. And I'm like, we threw all the magazines away when we moved. I'm like, God dang it. I'm, I'm complaining to myself. Right. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go to CVS after I'm done with the gym and I'm just going to go buy some toiletries that I need. And I'll look in the magazine thing. Maybe I'll pick up a magazine, maybe one, maybe two, you know, I don't really read magazines, something I'm, I'll just pick up a few, maybe. So I told my husband, I'm going to head to the, to the CVS. So I go to CVS, I pick up my toiletries and I head back to the magazine section Friend, if the idea of connecting to your angels and changing your life using your very own spiritual gifts sounds amazing and is deeply resonating with you today, I want you to go on my website and check out my angel membership. Registration is open. Sign up today and you'll get access to new course content and events each week and a private community. Members love how everything you need for your spiritual awakening is all in one place. Sign up today, angel membership. It's incredibly healing. Also, the winner of this month's free reading with me is in the show notes below. Leave a five-star positive review of my podcast or book, and you could be next month's winner. 
Lastly, check out the upcoming events page on my website, theangelmedium.com, because we have a lot of upcoming events that I know you're going to be interested in. And there was a gentleman there that was the um, publishing rep distributor, and he had a big cart and he was collecting all of the outdated magazines. And I was like, hey, (laughs) hey, what do you do with those magazines? And he goes, he goes, well, I throw them away. I go, you do? He goes, why? And I said, well, because I have this project. I'm supposed to do a, a manifestation board. <laughs> I had a bunch of pictures. <laughs> Julie says I need to do this. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I said, so I said, I have this project and I, I do need to cut up a bunch of magazines. And he goes, well, listen, he goes, I can't give them to you here, but I'll put them in the box. And in about 10 minutes, go back behind the dumpster and they'll be there waiting for you. And you can just take as many as you want. So that's a little side note. If anybody wants some free magazines, look back by the dumpster. At the end of the month. <laughs> there may be a bunch of magazines back there. True. So I was so excited. So I, I run back there and I had my backpack, which is weird because I don't carry my backpack unless I go to the gym, but I just come from the gym. So I had this big empty backpack and he had left the box by the dumpster and I'm going through it. I'm just like getting the candy store. One of everything. I mean, I have a lot of cooking magazines. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I have all these magazines. And he comes up and he goes, hey, what are you doing? Get in those <laughs> he scared me. <laughs> I felt like a little like, you know, vagabond going through the trash. And um, so I, I ended up with like, I think 20 to 30 magazines. <laughs> I showed him, it was so heavy, I could barely carry it home. And so I come home and I'm so excited and I'm like, throw the magazines. I'm like, look what he, my husband was, was cooking dinner. Actually. Yeah. He was sweet. He was cooking dinner because he's afraid of mammal. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, dinner. Okay. You just spent $300 on magazines. That's <laughs> That's $300 magazine. So I laid them all out. I don't know if you have the picture that you can pull up. So I laid them all out and I was just so excited because I knew that my bitching and my moaning of like how you manifest, there's a picture. Picture if yes. with all the <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I knew that, like, you know, that that was spirit. I knew that there were no coincidences. And the odds of me being at that time, at that minute, with a backpack, asking that question right after the job, I mean, it was manifestation in its finest. Um, and I, I didn't even know because I was complaining <laughs> about doing it. So needless to say, um, I put that all together and like, can you grab that? Yeah. And I want to show you my, cause you didn't get to see it. <laughs> my. <gasps> oh, you're bored. Yeah. So, oh, it's amazing. So I had so many pictures to choose from. Oh, you did so such colorful. a great job. <laughs> so, um, that was, you know, that's just many things. I think these things happen to people, but you don't recognize them. And yeah. when you do, it lights you up. I mean, you're just like, this is oh, not yeah. a coincidence. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think to your point too, it happens when you're self-doubting to override that self-doubt because we all have that within ourselves. And as soon as we can come out of that, we can really be in our true authentic power and living our true authentic lives. And that's what it's all about. Um, So, no, that's hysterical. Can you show the picture one more time? Oh, the picture of the magazines? Yeah, for anybody over here on YouTube. And we'll put a picture of it over on Instagram because it's just hysterical. Yvonne, like, knelt down by all of these, like, 30 (laughs) magazines that are all spread out across the whole floor. It's perfect. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, You're such a hoot. Yeah, no, it was definitely, um, you know, it's, it's funny because, and I just want to chat a little bit about my husband, because I yeah. think that a lot of, and well, I can don't I pause I, you before, yes, 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 before, sure. um, cause there's a lot of stuff coming through. Oh, for Ken. Yeah. yeah. So Ken, I don't want to put you on the spot here. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Are it's, you okay? If I take you to a vulnerable yeah. spot yes. I'm married to her for 25 years. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so who's the fatherly energy on the other side that you were really close to? My dad. Okay. Cause he's been like right here the entire time, like whispering in my ear. Um, but his dad was on the other side as well. And you were really close to him as, as well. Not as close to him as my, my, I was extremely close to my dad. 
you're dead. Okay. Um, cause I just, I don't know, you know, my job is not to filter messages. I just need to bring through things and you have to kind of piece it together. I need you to know that his dad is standing right next to him, just kind of signifying that they have a strong relationship on the other side. Also signifying that your grandfather is a big part of your spirit team as well. Okay. Are you not retired, but you're thinking of kind of like transitioning into a different? I am, I am retired. I'm re retired. retired as of two years ago. Yes. Oh, okay. But are you like tinkering with different things? Because yes. you're more yeah. of like an entrepreneur at heart, correct? Like you're always like playing with things. Yes. I'm doing okay. something with people right now, real estate type stuff. Yes. Okay. But is this new? Like this is a new direction for you? Yeah, as of when I retired two years ago, um, within a year after that, I was approached with an opportunity to do some uh, to, to do some uh, partnering with with real estate. Yes, so it's very new. I never dealt with it before. So okay, so your dad comes in, he shows me your thoughts, and he says, initially when you heard about this, you know where it can go, like you see it within your head of exactly where this can go. It okay. isn't there yet, but he said, do not give up on this because he said, you know exactly where this is going. He said, you're spot on on with this but sometimes you have that egoic mind too that comes in right and is like oh, i don't know or am i on the right path am i doing yes 110 percent. like and i would tell you if i thought that you weren't it's you're spot on okay he's like keep going do you have a son too like i know you have your your son and you've been with him since he was little um okay. And then we have a son. Together. We have one together. Yeah. One together. Okay. Is the one that you have together interested in the same work? Uh, investing, yes. Investment, yeah, kind of. He's doing something totally different now and he's very successful as a young 20 year old man, but uh, he definitely would like to do something more entrepreneurial for sure. Okay. Um, uh, listen. Not my job to filter messages. Yeah, don't just filter. Get, what That's was that movie that just came out? King Richard. Uh, did you guys watch this one? With, uh, with about Will the, Smith, uh, the Serena Williams. Serena, the Williams sisters. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. You know where they sat down and they, or he said, I, I sat down and I wrote like a 76 page plan for the girls. I didn't see the movie future. yet, but I do want to see it. I, it's on Hulu or, or something like that. Yeah. Your dad's pulling that card from my brain and handing oh. it to you. And what he's saying is you, we think as parents, they don't, they don't want to sit down for like an hour every week with us and learn what we have to teach them. He said, your son needs this. He wants this. He doesn't know exactly what he wants, but he needs the knowledge that only you have. And I'm going to give it to you like this. I was looking, um, so my background, you probably don't know this, Ken, my um, mom pushed me to go into journalism when I was like 13, 14 years old and write articles. And I got um, to be like writing for the third largest newspaper in Illinois really fast. And what you learn with writing newspaper articles is what's a good headline, right? Because if it's not a good headline, nobody goes in to read the story. And I was thinking to myself the other day, like, I want to teach these little skills. They're little teeny tiny things. But I was watching and kind of have a, some new team members and some new people working for me. And I was reading their headlines of what they're trying to put as like podcast titles and different titles um, as they're doing work for me. And I'm like, this is stuff that I learned back when I was 13, 14 years old. And like, I need to teach my kiddo just these little teeny tiny things because they go a long way. Your dad's taking that and handing it to you, but in your way where you have this knowledge within your head that your son needs. And, and he's also saying this to anybody out there listening who has kids who've been called kind of like your heart is pulled in this direction. Take time, sit down and map it out. What does he need to know? What are the lessons? And then take an hour every week or whenever you have time and go through with him. You might not realize this, but headlines are important. If you don't have a good headline, nobody's yeah. reading your stuff. There's little things like that, that he doesn't know.
And that if you actually took the time to like sit down and write it out, you would see. And um, it would it would just like it's going to allow him to take the baton that you're passing him and just run so much farther with it, too. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting because our youngest son, although he my dad passed away when he was only two years old. To this day, people say he is the spinning image of my father. Get uh, out of here. Yeah. Yvonne found a picture in our house, uh, my house when I was growing up. It was a picture of my dad when he was 18 years old with some of his other buddies. And Yvonne stole that picture from my mom's house and ended up blowing it out and get, blowing it up and giving it to all the grandkids as a Christmas present years ago. And everybody that sees it goes, oh my gosh, that looks just like Justin. Who is that? And I said, that's my dad, his, his paternal uh, grandfather. Wow. And he even says that as a kid, as a, you know, he, we gave it to him when he was 18, just before he went to college. He said, wow, Pop really looked, I looked a lot like Pop. <laughs> same look, same. It, it, and when he was little, he had the raspy voice like my dad <laughs> had. It was, it was uncanny. It's, it's, it's wild. So it's funny you said that about my youngest son and my dad because uh, there was a connection there, but like I said, he didn't know him because he passed away when he was um, two years old, which was unfortunate. But. Yeah. But he, but he saw him when he was little. Yeah. So we were, um, after he passed, I'm just going to tell this extra little angel story, wow, but um, really he excited. was about three years old and he was eating at the, at the high top counter and he looked up and he goes, mama, why is, why is he, I see Papa, he's eating grapes and, and olives <laughs> and he's looking up and I'm like, what do you see? <laughs> and, 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 you know, it was, it was, no, uh, he said grapes, but it, grapes. it actually was olives because he's Italian. Yeah, he's Italian. And, he's like, he called grapes, olives and cheeses olives. And, and, and meats. <laughs> and he said he mistook the olives for grapes yeah he that, thought they were grapes i think at two three years old he didn't know what a, he didn't know what an olive was at that yeah that's probably. true for sure yeah. oh yeah. my goodness that's hysterical they know well this is very clear too and this is from your side um ken you know um Yvonne, your son that you share you know uh your first son I don't want to leave him out. I'm very like, they're very sensitive of feelings too. I feel like Ken, your family on the other side is very much a part of his spirit team too. And through and through and through, like he is your soul son. Like I can totally feel that, that you have had past lives as biological father and son. Um, but I can just feel that love between you and as well i've always said to him is ever since he was you know we became married and he was my first son and we they're six years apart and uh, i'll make uh, just a quick story that always touches me is that um when jared was 18 he wanted to change his last name to my name and i said you don't have to do that that's just if you don't you know you're my son anyway i said that to him and at 18 years old he went and changed his driver's license, his passport, his birth certificate, and changed his last name to my name for he enrolled in um, in college. And he's wow. always been my son anyway. But yeah. um, and that happened, you know, when he was eighteen. It was almost 10, 12 years ago, and I was I was forty something years old, and I never had a tattoo on my body in my life. And I did get a tattoo of his initials on my arm when that happened and, and surprised this right here, just right. I surprised Aww. him and it, I just incorporated their, his middle initial with his brother since they're both J's, but it was something that was very touching to me. Every time I tell a story, that's, that's, um, it's very emotional for me. Yeah. You know, there's so much going on in this world and I love it on days like this where we can sit and have these stories about healthy communications, healthy energies, and you have an amazing, beautiful family and just so much love between you. And I know that spirit is just working with you both every step of the way. Um, thank you so much for being here to, to take time out of your schedule and share your stories. Thank you, Julie. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. And thanks for the message for Ken. Cause um, you know, Julie, I mean, I told him, I said, he's been dying to hear from his dad. And um, I said, it could happen. I don't know. You know, <laughs> and, uh, there it did. It happened. And he dreams about him all the time. But um, you know, he wakes up kind of teary-eyed and dreaming. And it's been he's been yeah, he's been he's been gone 21 years, and I yeah. just had a dream about him two nights ago. I dreamed yeah. about him all the time. Yeah. And many times I know he's not there by the end of the dream. And 
Yvonne knows sometimes I'll wake up in tears and other times I'll wake up smiling it, but it's, it's still, she always, she always is pushes it off as well. That's just a visit from your dad. That's all it is that you should be happy for. And, and it's really, he's been gone 21 years and it's just happened a couple of days ago again. So, Oh yeah. Well, you know yeah. um, what spirit says a lot of times is what grief really is, is just letting go and, the sorrow of not being able to physically connect with them the way that we do here. But what I like to teach people on the co the podcast, Ken, is that the connection's never gone. The connection is a soul connection. Your souls are bonded. So that love doesn't die. It's just transformed. And you can learn this new form of like telepathic communication with them. And so when dad is your very highly intuitive. You're very highly intuitive. You've always been, but you see it more in your own business sense. You could really relate that and step it into just your personal relationship with your dad of the next time you have a dream like that, or even just feel his presence, figure out when you have like 10 minutes to sit down in automatic writing and you just, Yvonne can show you this. You just get into a form of oneness energy. Um, which I don't know if you grew up going to church, you ever just yeah, feel that yeah. like holy divine feeling in church, yeah. you can feel that anywhere. And so you get into that, that's God's vibration, right? You get into that and then you're connected and you just say, dad, I want to talk to you. And you sit down with your pen and paper and you just have questions. And sometimes it's questions about us here. Sometimes it's questions about our kids or our partner or our business. But sometimes it's questions about the other side. What's it like over there? What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you with? <laughs> um, and um, you all are Italian. I come from a big Italian family, <laughs> even though I don't look like it. And uh, one of the biggest kicks that I get out of the other side in spirit is they're like, there's everything. They laugh so hard when they when we think to ourselves like it's we're floating on clouds over there. We're, they're like, we created this. We created this earth with all of this fun things to enjoy and to do and to love. Why wouldn't we have that over there? We do have drink. We do have food. We have it all we, <laughs> and more because we don't have the egoic mind or any of this negative <laughs> bullshit over here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. They so, have a sense of humor. That's, they, they have a sense of humor. They're, that's what, you're, you know, you always think when you're in church, everything's so serious. And it's like, they're laughing, having fun with us. You know? They are a hundred and ten percent. So think about it more in terms of the connection is different, but he's still communicating with you and you can still communicate back. Um, and so, Yvonne, you got to show him that automatic writing piece. I will. I okay. will. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Thank you both so much for taking your time to be here. I love this. This is so perfect. Thank, Thank you. So Thank much. you, Julie. It was, that, it, was, it was a pleasure. It was a treat. Thank you very much. Oh, you too. Have Thank a blessed you. day. Thanks. Bye. You too. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. Beautiful soul. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are sitting around you now, who's connecting with you, and how they're supporting you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a virtual session. You can do a reading with me or a member on my team. We're all incredible. We all talk to angels daily, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the best they can to support you and guiding you to the life you want to live. Virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website, never, never, never offered on social media, only offered on theangelmedium.com. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you're ready to go all in developing your unique spiritual gifts, growing your intuition, starting your own healing business, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. 
You'll learn energy healing, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and business mastery skills. That's the Angel Reiki School. You can find more information on theangelmedium.com or DM me over on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions you have. Friends, before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hand on your heart, taking a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love in front of you. I want you to step into that love in front of you. And I want you to feel it as it fills your body, your chakras, and your auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you.